everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel i was literally reorganizing like all of my bookshelves and i'm so hot and sweaty and gross ignore that but yeah i just got this weird urge to film so welcome to my may wrap up in this video we're going to be talking about the 11 books i managed to finish in may that might not sound like a lot but may was a really good reading month for me i'd like just come out of a slump so you know i was powering through my tbr did i buy like 50 more books in may potentially that's not what this video is about that's a whole another issue that we don't even have the time to start to unpack yes yeah, so welcome to my may wrap up it was an amazing reading month i got quite a few five stars in here and if you know me you know i don't rate books five stars like ever that was definitely really really good there are also a few letdowns in here as well so yeah i'm just super super excited to take you through everything i read in may let's go ahead and get started so right at the start of may i finished the ballad of never after by stephanie garber i read the first one in march i think and i really really enjoyed it i definitely liked this one more than the first one the first one for me it felt really really flat and if i'm being completely honest this fell a little bit flat too the romance just wasn't there and so many people have described it as like a slow burn romance but i mean it was slow i'll give it that much it was slow so slow that nothing happened I'm literally moving at the pace of a snail here the plot was amazing the plot was really well paced i can't even say the romance because there wasn't a romance there's tension there's chemistry between the two characters in this but there was no romance there wasn't a kiss a hug well actually to be fair there was a little, little something something but like they were drugged up that's not even romance that's just a crime i don't know i just felt like the romance fell really really flat in these books especially the first one but also in this one as well I kind of went into this one with like the expectation that at least something would happen like nothing really did in my brain <laughs> yeah i decided to give this book four stars as i said the plot was really well paced definitely definitely keeps you on your toes if you are a huge fan of fantasy but not so much romance you will love this series i think it's just the fact that it's marketed as a romance that kind of got me because where was it is the romance in the room with us and i said this about the first book where was the romance stephanie the second book i finished in may was my pride and joy heartbones by colleen hoover i picked this up like a couple months ago but you know when you just crave a certain author's writing i was like craving colleen this month that is a sentence i never thought i'd say on the internet but yeah i love colleen hoover we all know this i have my little designated shelf behind me i love this book I actually went into this not hearing the best things. A lot of people found it boring, bad pacing, bad characters. But I loved it. I ended up giving this book four stars. I liked the plot. I will say is the plot is a lot more mild than her other books. If you compare the plot of this to things like Verity, Ugly Love, November 9, the twist is so... How do I word this? The twist is very mild and chilled out. Like, you, it's kind of just a vibe. Nothing crazy happens, no one dies. It's just kind of like, oh my god, wow. Anyway, I will say the aftermath of the twist is what really, really got me. It did make me tear up just a little bit. Yeah, the aftermath of the twist was kind of what made this book for me. The book follows Bayer and Samson, I believe. Bayer basically faces this massive tragedy at home. She moves in with her dad, her stepmom, and her stepsister. And kind of has this, like, great summer with her stepsister and her stepsister's friends. She's out there, she meets Samson, who's a really, really rich boy that's basically looking after all of these houses for his dad. And they basically decide they're going to have, like, a summer and end it when the summer's over it was really good i really really enjoyed it yeah, this one was definitely a four star for me the next book i read in may was ricochet by krista and becca ritchie it's the second book in the addicted slash callaway sister series in this book we mostly followed lily on her journey through recovering addiction we don't know what the addicted series is about we basically follow lily and lauren fake dating friends to lovers kind of vibe we both have these kind of crippling addictions that they're trying to work through it's very much a story of growth i gave the first one three stars i didn't really get the hype this one i gave four stars oh i gave it 4.5 i gave it 4.5 i loved this book we didn't actually see much of lauren at all in this book but i loved lily i love lily with my whole heart so seeing more of her was like amazing for me this is like a lot of people's least favorite book in the addict i need to fix my hair as i was saying this book has definitely been my favorite so far in the entire series i was obsessed with it i love lily so much just seeing her story without low kind of in the equation is really really good i also liked seeing a lot more of the other sisters as well that was a huge factor for me i really 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 enjoyed this book and please don't skip it loads of people skip this book do not skip it i promise you you need this book to carry on with the series there's so much backstory and side story with the other characters miss this would hurt my soul don't do that to me the next book i read in may is a graphic novel it is the sad ghost club 
by Lizzie Meddings. I think it's Lizzie, it might be Lies, I'm not sure. I've been reading this series for ages. I think this one actually came out in April or March. Just hadn't got around to reading it yet. I love this book, I love these books so much. The entire series is very much three stars for me. I've never given one of these books any more than three stars. I'm pretty sure I gave this one three stars as well. While that might seem like a bad rating, it's not. Three stars for me means like, oh, I liked this. Like I did like it, but for me, they can just get a little bit boring. I'll kind of all about the same thing, but I'll still carry on reading it because they're just like a comfort read for me. The art style is literally adorable. If you don't know what the Sad Ghost Club is about, it's basically about this a group of ghosts. About this group of ghosts that form like a little mental health group club thing. They kind of help each other with like anxiety, depression, etc, etc. It's really sweet. It's a very feel-good read, a feel-good series. Feeling a little bit alone with any mental health things. Read the series. I promise it will help you out. I'm sad I kind of flicked through this and it instantly just makes me feel better. So yeah, I love this series so much and this book was a really, really good installment. The next book I read, I'm Not Well. I'm not emotionally well. I literally, it's one of those books where I stared at the wall for like four hours straight. Four hours is probably a bit too generous. I'd actually say around eight. This is my first five star read of the year. Here she is. Oh my God. I went into this book thinking it'll be a fun read. I'm not gonna rate it five stars. Literally look at the annotations. I gave it five stars so quickly. This is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This is about a couple called Magnolia and BJ. Magnolia and BJ are broken up. They're in a really toxic relationship where they kind of keep getting back together, doing things with other people just to make each other angry. I mean, slay, we've all been there. I feel like we've all had that one relationship where we're like, what if I just do this to piss them off? Yeah, I really, really enjoyed reading about this. Magnolia is the most relatable person I've ever read about everything she was saying i was like oh my god so me to be honest it's kind of concerning considering the relationship she was in probably chose to not have the best taste in men but i love this so much also really cool this is set in london near tower hill i work very near tower hill all of these things they were describing i was like i've literally walked down that street so that was definitely a really cool aspect of this that i loved quotes and the writing in this are not something to be like flown past i could film an hour long video purely about the writing and the metaphors in this novel absolutely amazing it is quite a hefty book but i managed to get through this in like a matter of days but yeah five stars 100 percent one of my favorite books of the year and probably some of my favorite books in general as you have the rest of the series so i'm super excited to carry on with their story and also daisy hates the next book i read this month which was actually another five star two back-to-back -back five stars who is she was things we never got over by lucy score to be honest for the first like 20 percent of this i was like this is a three star it hit the like, 25 percent mark and i was jaw on the floor it was so good the book is about Knox and Naomi. Naomi basically receives a call from her twin sister saying she's in trouble and she needs help. And Naomi goes to this really small town to kind of help her sister out. When she gets there, her sister is nowhere to be found and she is stranded in a small town with a lot of baggage. If you've read the book, you'll know what I mean by baggage. And basically her first encounter is a run-in with this tall, mysterious man who thinks she's her sister and they get into a little bit of an argument in a coffee shop. Then figures out that she's not actually her sister, she's an entirely different person and decides to help her find a place to live. To convince Conveniently is where he lives. It's amazing. It's forced proximity, enemies to friends, to lovers, to enemies, to lovers. Oh god, I loved it so much. The next book I read, I don't even have with me. Not because I read it on Kindle, but because I got rid of it. It's really heartbones. I was like, I miss Colleen, so I gave this book a go. Never never. That was quite fitting because I wish I'd never never picked this up. Oh, awful, horrific, disgusting, awful, bleh. I need to crack the wine out for this review. Put all my lipstick marks on the white glass. That's kind of gross. Like it's basically about these two teenagers called Charlie and Silas. Completely lose their memory and they have to try and figure out what happened to their relationship. It's like amnesia, but with plot holes. So yeah, they both lost their memory, but somehow conveniently remembered how to drive, how to get around, what town they lived in. And just why is that what they remember? It's weird to me. Also mixed with the fact that they don't lose their memory once, they lose it about four times. So it's basically just like the same few chapters over and over and over and over. It's never explained. It was never explained. And that's what gets me. There was so much in the book that happened, but they were like, we'll find out what this means later. And we just never did. I hate a plot hole. I hate them. So yeah, definitely wasn't my favourite. Give it two stars. I also found the writing to be just very off. Now this was co-written with Tara and Fisher. I'm not sure if their writing styles just don't mix well. I just didn't love it. it love, I, I hated it. I hated it. All I want to say on that book before I start having an emotional breakdown again. Reading that book was genuinely a fever dream. It was torture. Watching paint dry. Got a bit heated there. The next book I read in May was Addicted for Now by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This was the third book in the Addicted series. And my God, why is it the length that it is? Nothing could ever excuse one of these books of being over 300 pages and this was like 550 just 
I'd say a good like this much of the book was just fluff. Unnecessary fluff. There was like a bit of risk to this book. The characters gets blackmailed, so I quite liked that. The outcome of the blackmail was pretty crap though, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, there's like supposed to be this massive plot twist and it kind of hits and you're just like, oh, okay. That's kind of like what that was for me. I didn't love this one. I ended up giving it three stars, I believe. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed Lily and Lowe's relationship in this. Also Rose and Connor and also Reich. Oh my god, Reich. Man was the redeeming factor for this book. There's no Reich, there's no stars. Damn, I should use that phrase more often. Genuinely, Reich was the only thing that pulled this book back out the mud for me. It fell very flat, much like the first one did. This series is just like a little bit hit or miss for me. This one was a very, a very clear miss. Like, so far missed that it didn't even come close to me, you know? Yeah, this wasn't my favourite, but I definitely enjoyed learning more about the sisters and the other guys as well. I have three books left and they were all pretty damn good. The next book I read was The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. I gave this book a 4.5 stars. This book is about a housemaid called Millie. Millie has basically just gotten out of prison, so she decides to go work for a really rich family as a housemaid. Clearly that's the logical thing to do in her brain. She starts working for a very, very rich family. Things start to go wrong remarkably quickly. Like 10% into the book, things were hit in the fan. Short book, which is why I think I enjoyed it so much. It's under 300 pages. Yeah, I loved this so much. There's just, it's crazy. It's like it was a tiny, tiny bit predictable in some places, but for me, that's just validation because I'm so smart, I got the plot twist right. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed reading this and I would definitely be picking up the second one this month. The yeah, next book I read this month was another thriller. I was on a little bit of a thriller kick towards the end of the month. I read Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney. This is about Adam and Amelia. They are a married couple. Their marriage is literally falling apart at the seams. I went into this book thinking it was going to be a five star read. It was three. It just, it felt a little bit what's the word incoherent i'm not sure what to me felt very much like let's just put these things in together in a plot line and call it a day there wasn't links between the plot points there wasn't explanations the ending was just plain confusing there were twists like every 10 pages which i loved overall this definitely wasn't my favorite thriller and it probably will never be I picked up another one of her books because i want to give her writing another go i don't know it just fell a bit flat for me and the last book of the month that i picked up was the hunger games by suzanne collins you guys know i'm gonna get this high rating i gave this a four stars i loved it i loved it so much kind of relived 10 year old grace's dreams by reading this I've not read it in 10 years so it was a little bit of a surprise I like katniss's character better in the books she's kind of a little bit of a garbos bad bitch kind of vibe she's just a lot cooler in the books than she is in the movies <laughs> isn't that always the case i love this if you for some reason have been living under a massive huge rock and you don't know what the hunger games is about it's about a girl called katniss who takes place in a tournament with 23 other tributes basically we'll just have to kill each other and one person comes out alive peter malark oh my god oh my god He's got game. He's got game. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. This, it was just such a nostalgic little throwback for me. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed reading this. And if you haven't already read this trilogy, go read it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I had a really good reading month this month. I'm hoping June's actually going to be better. My hand is getting so tired already. Don't fall. Don't fall. I'm trying to make the end of this video aesthetically. I'm done. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. And I will see you all next week. Bye.